I'd like to take a couple of minutes to explain the hydraulic or fluid-based flight simulator. And its purpose is to illustrate the four forces of flight, the four forces that are in play on an airplane in flight, as well as the interplay of potential energy and kinetic energy on an airplane in flight. The potential energy, of course, is the fuel that the airplane has on board, as well as the altitude of the airplane. The kinetic energy is the motion or the speed of the airplane through the air. So this demonstration includes a number of vessels, uh, and the fluid in this case is a colored water. There are three vessels. The potential energy represented, uh, which represents the fuel in an airplane, is in the first vessel. And this vessel has a valve on it that allows the potential energy in the airplane to be released in an actual airplane. That's the fuel powering the engine and driving the forward motion of the airplane. In this case, the energy or the representation of energy in this fluid is released uh, into a second vessel um, which has a graduated scale that represents um, the kinetic energy or airspeed of the airplane. Now, if I ask my assistant to step into the frame, we can see that the second vessel can be controlled by a control stick. The control stick is connected to a number of pulleys which can raise and lower this second vessel. When the second vessel um, is in a neutral position, it will uh, fill with fluid, representing the energy that's converted from fuel, or the potential energy, to air speed. And when this vessel is raised above a certain level, that the kinetic energy is converted into potential energy represented by the altitude. Uh, of the airplane. And the third vessel has a graduated scale that represents the altitude of the airplane. There are a number of hoses that connect these uh, vessels to allow the energy to flow between, the, between them. Um, there are also, in this um, hydraulic model, um, a number of other features that account for the behavior of the airplane in flight. Of course, there's thrust, the forward force on the airplane. And to represent drag, there are an array of holes across the back of this vessel, which allow the energy to um, bleed off. The faster the airplane goes, um, the greater the resistance as a force, as a, as a function of drag. And as you'll see when we actually demonstrate our airplane, uh, model, uh, we'll see that the faster the airplane goes, the more um, energy is lost as a function of drag. While we're looking at this vessel, we'll also see that there's a float, and the float is powered um, by an electrical circuit, and this float um, is um, meant to represent and meant to model the behavior of um, the airplane when it's in a flying mode. In other words, it has enough kinetic energy to, um, to take off, to fly, to sustain um, flight, or when it doesn't have enough um, kinetic energy to fly. There's a light that's connected to the switch that's a low kinetic energy warning light, and when the float uh, is in an up position, it means that there's enough kinetic energy in the airplane to sustain flight. When the float is down, when that uh, kinetic energy level is low, it means that the plane is no longer able to sustain flight. That switch actually actuates a valve, and the interplay between airspeed and altitude uh, is clear when a plane goes into a stall there's no longer enough kinetic energy in the airplane to sustain flight. In our um, hydraulic or fluid-driven model, this switch is actually going to release um, fluid from the third vessel, 
which represents altitude, and in a complete stall, the airplane is no longer flying. Indeed, it's dropping back down to the earth, and we'll see that in our demonstration. So we are able with this model to demonstrate climb, cruise, stall, slow flight, a stall recovery, uh, and landing, and a number of other functions of an airplane in flight.